If you've boated for any length of time at all, you have probably already figured out that your gauges on your dash just are not that accurate. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to bypass that and get all the information you need as to how well your boat is running. Welcome back to the boat. It's a gorgeous day here in Nashville. It's about 65, close to 70 degrees. The sun is shining, the lake is nice and smooth. We came out to the boat, we just cleaned it. And now we're gonna talk about how you can see what your, your, your boat's really doing without your gauges. So Mercruiser, this is for Mercruiser people, Mercruiser came out with a system called SmartCraft. There's a bunch of different options to how you can get this information. And what I use is a Bluetooth dongle. It plugs into your engine harness. I'll show you a picture right here. And it gives you all the information on any smart device, iOS or Android via Bluetooth. So let's talk about it. Like I think I said before in the video, Anything that basically connects via Bluetooth, whether it be Android or iOS, you can use to view information for vessel view. So I use my phone while I'm running vessel view, which is anytime the boat is running. What you're looking at here is the home screen of my phone. So let's click on boat apps, click on vessel view, and there's the app. It opened up. Now that the app is open, this is the first screen you're going to see. You'll notice across the top, it says offline, and you'll actually even see on the far right side, there is the little X through the boat icon. That's simply because it's not getting information. I have the key off, and the way this is wired into your boat is it connects to your factory harness and reads off of your ECU or EMU. So if you don't have the key on, it's just not gonna read, obviously. So that's why that says offline. Even with the key in the off position still, uh, therefore you're not getting power to vessel view, there are still options and things that you can go ahead and change or update or view even though you're not connected. So let's take a look at those right now. I'm guessing you've probably already noticed there's zero gallons of fuel showing, so that's the first thing we're gonna update right now. In order to update the fuel information, just press on the fuel pump icon and that will open up your fuel information window. Now that the window's open, Let's go ahead and reset all the information. We're going to reset total fuel, press on total fuel, hit yes. That'll reset it back to zero, which it already was. And we're going to do the same for fuel used. Click on it, hit yes. Now we're back to zero. So let's add fuel. To add fuel, you just press on the gas pump icon, type in how many gallons you added, hit save. And there it is. You got 15 gallons of fuel. But since the key is still off, it's not going to properly read distance to empty and time to empty. That will calculate once you get power to the system. Now let's take a look at the detailed fuel economy information. You can get there by clicking on the arrow between the distance to empty and time to empty information. All of the information on this page comes directly from your onboard computer with the exception of speed. The speed information comes from the GPS on your smart device. So let's go ahead and click reset averages, reset everything and take a look at other features of vessel view. Next, we're going to take a look at some of the detailed engine information and some of your boat features, and we're going to do that by clicking on the hourglass. Take a look at the top of the page and you'll see two icons, one a boat and one an engine. Obviously, we're on the boat right now. That shows your serial number, that shows your fuel capacity and engine hours. Now let's click on the engine icon. Again, this information is pretty self-explanatory, so let's get to another page. Here we are back at the main page. So let's take a look at the bottom of the page to the icons to the left side and right side of the plus. If you notice right now, the little speedometer icon is marked red. That is the icon for the main page. As you'll notice, all of these pages are pretty self-explanatory. So we're gonna go through them quickly. You can explore the functionality on your own. So the first one we're gonna take a look at is the second icon over and that's the maps page. Within the maps page, you'll see four sub pages. You'll see the icons pop up right here. The first one is add a moment, the second one is add a catch, the third one is add a location, and the fourth one is add a hazard. These will all be populated and stored right on your local device. The next page is pretty simple. It is the calendar app. Open that up and you can see right there, there's all of my history, all of my maintenance. It's nice and easy just to scroll back and see when you did what. And the final sub page on our main page is checklists. I'm going to scroll through them really quickly. They're pretty self-explanatory, just like the rest. So take a look on your own and see what you think. And as you can tell by the lack of check marks through the checklists, I don't use the checklists all that often. 
Back at the main page, now let's talk about the main menu. That's the three bars at the top left. And here you're going to see Save Profiles. We're going to click on that. And that is the information we showed you earlier, just a different place to access it. So now we're going to open that back up and look at faults. Observe faults and block faults. So let's talk about observed faults and active faults. So let's take a look at the five faults that I normally have on my boat. And the first one is going to be the pitted pressure. That's because I don't have a regular speedometer hooked up. I use GPS on this app and I use GPS on my navigation. So I don't have to use that speedometer. So we're going to go ahead and block that. We're going to click block. It's going to ask me if I'm sure. Absolutely. Click it. Now it's gone. The next fault is going to show that is level tank A. You have the option of two tanks being connected since we only have the one to monitor, which is our fuel tank. I don't have the second one hooked up. So obviously I don't need it. So once again, we're gonna do the same exact thing we did with the pitted pressure. We're gonna go ahead and click on block. Yes, I'm sure, and now it's gone. My next regular fault is the steering position sensor. My boat just does not have that, so obviously it's gonna read wrong. It's ready to go, so once again, we're just gonna block that. We're gonna click on block. It's gonna ask me if I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure. Let's block it. Now it's gone as well. As a disclaimer, I'm only blocking these because Mercurs are said to go ahead and do that. I'm seeing these faults simply because I don't have these sensors in my boat. If Vessel View is looking for them, therefore, they're gonna continue showing up. So I'm blocking these. You may have an entire different set of faults that show up. Some may be valid, some not. So if they show up, check with Mercruiser, check with your mechanic before you do any blocking or silencing. Our next fault is also symptomatic of not having a sensor and that is the seawater temperature sensor. Some boats again have that where you can put a sensor in, it will tell you the temperature of the water you're gonna dive into. I don't have that, I have it on my GPS, so we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna click on block, yes, and it's gone. And now we're down to the final fault and this is one that I do need to have looked at and that is my trim position sensor. My sensors are reading just a little bit off so I need to get them serviced. Therefore, I'm not gonna block it. It will continue to show up until I have that thing serviced. So let's move on and we're gonna take a look at the maintenance. So there we go, click maintenance. Once it opens up, you'll see the two columns, inspect and replace. Click on either of those, a check mark is gonna show up. And if you wanna save that, just click log maintenance and you're all set to go. But I'm not gonna do that right now. So let's get back to out of maintenance, back to our home screen. Okay, back to the main page, main menu. Let's click performance this time. Whole shot, that's a game you can play timing your zero to 20 and zero to 30, and leaderboard shows how fast you do that. As you've already seen, most of these pages are pretty self-explanatory, so let's skip a few and head down to the settings page. So let's click on settings, and there you can see all of the settings of your app. So now we're all set up, let's get back to the main page, and you can see we're still disconnected. So you can let it auto-connect, or what we're gonna do is we're gonna click the connect button, once we clicked on that, it's gonna scan for devices. There's my profile. I'm gonna click on that. You can see it's connecting. Now that we're connected, you'll see the little blue icon, the tool icon pop up. That just simply means some of your general maintenance is coming due. Just make sure you get that taken care of sooner than later and you'll be all set to go. You might also notice there's zero RPM. That's because there's power to the module. We just don't have the boat started yet. As Vessel View continues on with its diagnostics, it's going to let you know what's going on with your boat. As you can see popping up right there is the yellow triangle with the exclamation point. That's going to show you that you have faults. I've already showed you how to find those in the menu page. This is just going to show every time you go ahead and initialize the module. So there's what I've got left, the trim position. We're all set to go. So now let's go back to the main menu. So you look right above the red line there, you're gonna see three pieces of information. You're gonna see the wind, you're gonna see the temperature, and you're also gonna see your heading. So just above that information, you're gonna see the boat icon, and it no longer has the X through it. So just a real quick visual representation showing you that you are connected and you're set to go. Okay, yeah, I know that was a lot of information, but we're finally gonna to get to the main question that I see asked most often, and that is how do I get to the detailed pages? How do I see what my boat is really doing and to do that, we're gonna click where it says zero RPM on your tachometer, and that is gonna open up the first of three pages that you can customize. This is the default page that Mercruiser sets up for you. You can see it has your tachometer, has your temperature, and has your voltage. So let's take a look at what we need to do to customize this page and to add other customized pages. So to customize this page or any of your pages, just click on the menu up above with the plus sign, 
When that opens up, that's going to show you all of the information from which you can choose. So there it is. You see the three check marks. That's what markers are set by default. You can take those away or add to them. Say you want to add current fuel flow, you'd press that, a green check marker would show up. And if you want to move it up in priority, just swipe up or swipe down. And that's how your information will show on your page. You can name this page whatever you want. This one shows engine. Once you're done with that, hit the back button and now your information shows up exactly like you set it up. If you'd like to add a second custom page, just swipe to the right. You'll see an icon with a little page and a plus symbol. Click on that and that will give you the option to make a second custom page. So let's take a look at what my custom page looks like, the one that I run every time I run my boat. You can see by the name I got real creative. I left it as the default. Every time I make a new page, it's called my data and well, that's what I left it as. Here's the information that I like to see every time I'm running my boat. I like to see tachometer, engine temperature, oil pressure, gallons per hour, how many gallons of fuel I have left, and speed. That's the page that I run every time my boat's going, but I do have a second page, so let's take a swipe to the right and take a look at my down and dirty information. This is the four pieces of critical information I want to see. Again, tachometer, engine temperature, voltage, and how many gallons of fuel that I have left. That's my down and dirty custom page number two. Because I use this on my iPhone, I keep this set up vertically. I run it in portrait mode, but one of the cool features about it is you can also turn it and it reads in landscape mode as well. I know that got just a little bit long and I apologize. I tried to cover as much as I possibly could. I really tried to cover the pieces of information that I see people asking about all the time. I'd encourage you, go out and buy it, poke around and adjust the settings to your liking. I promise you, it's gonna be the best $200 that you'll ever spend for your boat. All right, we're out on the water. The boat's running. As you can look right here, I've got my vessel view information going. So we're running about 590 RPM according to our ECU. If you look at our tachometer, it's showing about 1200. So this thing does get off. It's just an analog gauge. It is what it is. If you look at our temperature, 136 degrees. Right here, we're reading about 150 on our temperature gauge. So that's just a sender thing. Again, it's an analog gauge. Uh, this is part of the reason I had this system. Voltage, right around 14, 14 and a half. We're at 14.8 in there, so that one's pretty close. And then fuel pressure, we're just under 40 on our gauge. Here we're at 49, and we're burning one gallon per hour, doing zero miles per hour. So that's how it works. I'll show you right up here what it looks like. It's real small. It's super easy to plug in. You register it with Mercruiser and then all you do is download the app and get the information. Like I said, you can check out the SmartCraft system on Mercruiser website and there's a bunch of different options from gauges to other things. This is the simplest, quickest, and believe it or not, the least expensive option they have and it's perfect for what I need so I can see everything that my boat is doing and not have to worry about analog gauges giving me a different story. Hope you found this useful and helpful information. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Maybe consider subscribing to my channel and sharing it with your friends. If I left something out or you have questions about it, do me a favor, leave it in the comments below. I'll answer every comment that comes across. Even if it's just a hey, I'll say hey back. I appreciate all your support. Enjoy the time you have left on the lake here in Tennessee. Our time's getting short. I'll catch you later.